Welcome to the Real Film Nerds Podcast. Welcome, hello, good day, good evening, good morning, good night, whatever time of day you're listening to us, and you are now listening to another exciting episode of the Real Film Nerds Podcast. I believe this is episode 112. Uh, we made it past 100, which is a good thing, I guess. Um, some people listen, some people don't. So, all right. That's good. We made it. With me, as always, my good buddy, back from an exciting adventure where he got sunburnt, Mr. Mike Talent. Hey, everybody. So, Mike, you're just going to stop with, hey, everybody? No, no, I, I was just, well, usually you ask me a question, so I guess I was for a second there, but. Well, I was saying how you got sunburnt, so I was like, I thought you were going to loot a little bit on that, but. Um, I, I spent some time in the sun, I took a little vacation to the south uh, area, and uh, went out on a, a uh, cruise ship uh, to the Caribbean, and uh, it was pretty fun. Now, how many vacations does that make now in the past month and a half? Um, that's only like two and a two, I think. Just two. Just two. All right. Just two vacations. All right. Just making sure. All right. Yeah. Yeah. You, you're you on the, the one vacation a month plan, aren't you? No, I'm on the one vacation a life plan. Oh. I got to come out to your and wedding you, last year and that's it. And and you used it up yep it's gone I, huh. I used it to come out to your wedding you know i appreciate that um that is i didn't know that that was the only vacation you were going to get in your entire life but i guess so hey you know you got to do what you got to do for your best friend you know yes yes uh no it was it was it was good um uh, I'm sorry that I stole your only vacation that you'll ever have. I'm just glad that I remember to wear pants the whole time. Yeah, yeah, you you did remember to wear pants the entire time. They're just so restrictive. I just, I'm not a huge fan. Well, you know, I guess everybody likes their own things. I, I'm, I'm a big shorts guy. I just like wearing shorts. See, so you don't like pants either. No, or I don't shoes. Like pants. No, no, or shoes. All right, so, Mike, I will get us back on topic since uh, this is not the world's best topic. I don't know. <laughs> All right, yep, yep, let's let's get back on topic, Matt, and let's get back off topic. Matt, what are you drinking? <sighs> I'm drinking my standard... Go to alcoholic beverage next to Miller High Life. That's four peaks kill lifter. Oh, that's an excellent one, man. That's an excellent one. That's like your go-to. That's fine. It is. It's uh I almost always have at least one to twelve kill lifters in my fridge. Nice. Uh I am drinking a uh Founders All Day IPA. Big shocker, it's an IPA, but it's a session beer, so it's a little bit lighter on the alcohol. You going soft on us, Mike, or you just had a rough weekend? Uh, I I just got these for... I went out in some sun and didn't want to have the heavy alcohol in the sun. doesn't go well. Oh, so these are leftovers? Yeah, they're leftovers. That means you didn't drink enough. No, I, th I, think, I, I think it was fine. <laughs> no, I think it was fine. All right. Well, then we'll just leave it at that. Yeah, yeah. Mike, what movie are we talking about today that you're going to give five out of five reels to? Uh, we are talking about John Wick, Chapter 3, Parabellum. And uh, this was directed by Chad Stahelski, uh, written by Derek Kolstad, Shea Hatton, Chris Collins, Mark Abrams, and Derek Kolstad. It's starring Keanu Reeves, Halle Berry, Ian McShane, 
and Lawrence Fishburne. And it's about super assassin John Wick is on the run after killing a member of the International Assassins Guild. And with a 14 million price price tag on his head, he is the target of hitmen and women everywhere. Well, all right, Mike. Five out of five reels. Done. Good podcast. Yeah. Good pod. Yeah, five out. Of, yeah, yeah, five out of five. Boom. Good pod. Easy. Loved Easy. It. Yeah, loved it. Uh, now, uh, well, I guess likely it is gonna. Well, no, it's not gonna be a five out of five for me, but it is a really good movie, and it was a lot of fun. I like this one a lot more than the second one. I felt like the action and stuff was more entertaining and pretty much the whole movie is action and it was i liked how it took place uh, about 20 minutes after the second movie and uh that that's awesome i thought that was a really good way to start the movie and continue on with this john wick universe essentially like it keeps getting a little deeper and deeper well, all three of them take place within, what, I believe a week of each other. Um, the second and third one clearly take place right after each other, but there's references in this one to it, him slaughtering lots of people over a time period of a week because of a puppy. Yes, there is a reference of that, and it's kind of funny. It's one of some of the lighter moments in this movie. This one doesn't have too many light moments, though. No, it was... uh, I know there's lots and lots and lots of action, and that's a good thing, and it's sometimes a bad thing because it was almost kind of relentless action. The thing that was nice, though, is that it was not your typical action like John Wick 1 and 2 where he's, you know... Two in the chest, one in the head. Two in the chest, one in the head. Two in the chest, one in the head. That's like all he did in uh, John Wick 1 and 2. Uh, yeah. Yeah, he definitely changed it up. This there, I, I, You know, without getting into spoilers, I don't want to say any of this stuff. But it was definitely a, a new way of, of certain things. And I really liked how they integrated in various aspects of uh environmental elements well it was a lot more creative when it came to taking out the other assassins is a good way to put it because um yeah it, that's a good way to it's, put it they're not normal people they're all people that in that are part of this world and they all know you know he exists and who he is and they're all known that you know he broke his rule and spoilers for the second one you know he killed someone on uh continental property and so you know it it, you have to be tied to this world to know what he did and to go after him and things like that it's not just random people but that's one thing that does kind of bother me about this film a little bit not a whole lot but a little bit it really came off in the first two films that this assassin world kind of lies underneath in the shadows of the public world or the known world. And in this one, it doesn't really come off like that. It kind of comes off like, well, we'll just kill kind of anybody, anytime, whenever kind of thing. Whereas he was a lot more cautious of the assassins he was killing and where he was killing them and where the bodies would go. And like, even in the first one, they call up, you know, that, that, you know, he makes a dinner reservation for 12 and they come up and take away the 12 bodies, you know? Yeah, no, you're right. It was uh, very um, on the outskirts of society, like a secret kind of society. But everyone knew uh, everybody in the game, I guess, like everybody knew the other people that were involved in the same kind of stuff. Right. And this one, it it kind of is more open. And I'm not a super huge fan of that. I like the dark, seedy kind of underground thing. And everybody goes about their business and no one really knows that this assassin guild or whatever exists. And But whatever. I mean, I understand it has to be exposed to a level at some point because, you know, they are hunting them down and 
basically broad daylight now because of the contract being so high. I mean, $14 million, that, that's a chunk of change. Yeah, the $14 million, I think, is indicates the, the urgency and uh, how quickly they want it to be executed. So a lot of people that would keep this quiet are like, um, yeah, we're going to ignore that for now. Yeah, yeah, that, that's a good assessment. Um, so this one, this one is a little tough to talk about without spoiling it because, uh, the action is what makes the film. Um, the film is the action. A lot of it. Uh, one thing I did like, um, I touched on it a little bit that it, you got the CD world and all this, and it feels they're building it a little bit more, which helps. Uh, I would have liked to seen a little bit more world building, but we got to see our third continental our second one that is overseas and that was interesting and especially who was running it and how she was running it yes yeah that one was interesting where it was at and everything um it was cool and we got to see another one that was interesting that i wish they would have elaborated more on but we got to see a mint where they actually make the uh gold coins i think they're gold might be another metal, but it comes off as gold that the assassins use to pay for everything in their network. Staying at the Continental, you know, getting guns, getting tailored, whatever. And we got to see that. And I wish they would have gone into that a little bit more because that could have been an interesting world in its own. How many mints are there? Is this the only mint? What is really on the coin? What does it matter? You know, how do you... Uh, that's one I've always questioned as well is how you earn one of these gold coins. I know the different people that are doing work, like the gunsmiths and the tailors and the continental host and the manager, they all get the gold coins when you pay for the services. But how do the assassins like John Wick get said gold coins? Yeah, no, um, it didn't really, you're right. It doesn't really explain that. And I think maybe the bounties might be paid in the gold coins. You just don't know how much those things are worth, and they never really tell you. It just seems to be able to pay for whatever it needs to pay for. Well, and it definitely seems there's a, there's a value to it, at least in the first couple, because um, when the guy comes and takes away the 12 bodies of the people that John kills in the first one, he gives them... It, I might have counted it wrong. It was either six or 12 gold coins. So one coin per body, which, you know, that, yeah, <laughs> that's a lot of work, <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah, that, the, yeah, but it seems like he pays, well, yeah, he might pay for more when he gets his suit tailored and, and, and when he gets some guns. I don't know. I don't know. I, I I would have to rewatch. Well, and then you get to the Continental, and he only ever gives them one coin, at least when he checks in. So it might be a coin a day or something. But when he gets his guns, he gives them a handful of coins. And when he, uh, in Chapter 2, when he's uh, looking up the uh, documents about the uh, um, catacombs under the uh, castle or whatever the hell it was in Rome, uh, he gives that guy like three or four coins. So I don't yeah, know. Yeah, that's true. I, I just yeah. kind of want, I like this world. I like the world building they're doing. I just want a little bit more explanation, maybe a little less action. I know that's blasphemy. And today they announced that John Wick 4 is confirmed. It's definitely coming. And if you've seen this film, John Wick 3, you expect it to be coming. So yeah, the uh, John Wick 3 uh, won the box office from Avengers um, in game. Uh Kicked it out for the first time uh, since it came out. So at three weeks it lasted, and uh, this made like fifty-seven, fifty-five million, something like that opening weekend. I know you're the numbers man. Yeah, something like that. Anyway, it, it beat Avengers by quite a bit and uh, beat him handsomely. Well, Mike, speaking of Avengers Endgame, how does John Wick three relate? to the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Oh man, no, 
that was a perfect segue, Matt. Good job on that one. I um, I almost overpassed it too because I was like, oh no, he's going to talk about Avengers. I got to do this. I got to get this. All right, so Avengers. Oh, jeez, I was just thinking Avengers. Uh, John Wick three or Chapter three, uh, Parabellum relates by uh, Lawrence Fishburne was in Ant Man and Wasp as Doctor Phil Foster, but also the uh, director of this movie, Chad Stahelski, um, was the second unit director for Captain American Civil War. And was a utility uh, stunt coordinator for Iron Man 2. And he might have worked on a couple other movies. But those are the ones I saw real quick. So, Huh. Very cool. Yeah. You're not going to use the one that I gave you, huh, Mike? What was the one that you gave me? Uh, Mark Dacascos, I think is how you pronounce it. Who plays Zero in John Wick 3 is uh in agents of shield um season he's in one specific season i don't remember which one agents of shield he was in 11 episodes between 2015 and 2016 he played a character called guy yira i think is how you pronounce it anyways ah okay yeah this is the uh Actually, this particular star is like the third time that um, Keanu, Reeve, Keanu Reeves and him have had to fight in movies. Really? Because he was because he was in uh, The Matrix uh, Reloaded, and then he uh, he was also in uh, The Iron. Oh shoot! Now I'm gonna screw it up. Um, another movie with Keanu Reeves. Hold on. I'll get it. Do I distract? Do I need to start the timer? Yeah, yeah. Distract away. Distract? How am I supposed to distract? I I want to talk about that dude. That's why you know, but I can't do that until we say we're gonna spoil everything. Oh, okay. Hold on, hold on. I'm almost there. I think. That's what she said. (laughs) He was in the movie The Man of Tai Chi. Okay. Yeah, I never would have gotten that one either. Yeah, I think I watched it on Netflix, honestly. And then there's a actor in here from The Raid. Oh, there is? Yeah. I love The Raid. Um. Oh, dude, I don't remember his name. He's one of the dudes that he uh, he fights with towards the end. I don't even know if he has a name. Oh, okay. Okay. Anyways, well, all right, screw it. Let's go ahead. We're just going to warn you now. Spoilers from here on out for John Wick 3. So if you uh, have not seen it and you want to see it, uh, go ahead and flick this guy off. Okay, so Mike, the um, actor that was in the raid is one of the two uh, uh, um, assassins from the sushi bar that works with the guy. uh, um, Zero, uh, Mark uh, Dacascos character. Is he... Yeah. So, like, you know, they have that big battle as they're working their way up the, uh, what what do they call it, the administration office or uh, whatever? Is it, is it Shinobi 1 or Shinobi 2? Yeah, it's one of those two, I think. Oh, yeah, Shinobi he 1. He has, like, a ponytail. Cisep Arf Raham. Oh, man, I, I, I'm sorry I screwed that up. C-E-C-E-P-A-R-I-F-R-A-H-M-A-N. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, he's he's from the raid, and he's a really good martial art, you know, stunt actor, coordinator, or whatever guy. Oh yeah, man. Did you watch the raid or the raid two yet? No, I have not had a chance, sir. I need to. I need to. Definitely. Especially since I think it's still on the old Netflix under a different name, though. Oh, maybe they had they changed. It they had to change the name legally in America for something. So it's the raid uh, something something. It's still the raid, but it's the raid with like a extra sentence or something attached to it. I don't remember what it is. I'd have to look it up. Oh, they had to add it so it doesn't yeah, it's probably taken in some other movie. Right. It was some kind of copyright American trademark thing, whatever. Which happens all the time. I mean, that's why uh not to go back on the Marvel Cinematic Universe, 
But when uh, the Avengers movies uh, came out in uh, the UK, they had to change the name of the Avengers because there already is something trademarked and copyrighted in the UK, the Avengers television show, which was either in the 50s, 60s, somewhere in there. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. So they had to call the Avengers TV show something else. I mean, not TV show, uh, movies. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Okay. Anyways, so no, um, that was probably, I don't want to say it was my favorite fight scene, but it's damn close, was that final, you know, um, well, the multiple finals, but I really like the one between uh, Keanu Reeves and Mark um, DeCosco, where they're fighting it out with the samurai swords, and they're both just so exhausted and just, you know, he Zero sees his counterbalance in John Wick, John Wick sees his counterbalance in Zero, and they're just so evenly matched that, that that samurai sword fight just goes on and on and on and on and on. I just really like that. That was really good. Yeah, no, that was really good. I wasn't sure how they were going to do that. I I loved a lot of, now that we're spoiling a little bit, uh, I loved a lot of the environmental fights. So, like, uh, some of the stuff with uh, the horse area and... Um, there's an underwater scene that I that I loved a lot. Um, yeah, the only problem, just... the underwater scene, is that where he's drowning the dude and he shoots him and the bolts are like stopping and stuff? Yeah. Yeah, the only problem I had with that is I don't think the guns would have fired underwater. Uh, some guns will. Uh, if it, it depends. Well, and, you know, and I don't even think it's so much based on the, the gun. I think it's based on the bullets, which... I'm sure, you know, I mean, because the military has rounds where if your gun gets wet, it's still fire and things like that. So, yeah, you know, you're probably right. I'm just probably really overthinking it too much, which is a possibility. Y- yeah, you're right. If if, if the gunpowder gets wet, it doesn't ignite. But uh, I'm pretty sure that the rounds that they are using are, are supposed to be using in this movie would actually shoot in the water. Oh, and it is a hardcore assassin movie, so you got to suspend some truthiness in it. Even though the reloading and a lot of the gunplay is extremely accurate, you know. Oh yeah, man the 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 shotgun reloading stuff was awesome. Oh, that was so neat. That was very cool. Because I mean, that's how it is. It really takes forever to reload a shotgun. I know. I got one. It's a pain in the ass. <laughs> I just, uh, watching that scene, it just, I was like, man, you would have to be so strong to be able to shoot that gun so fast, so many times. Well, especially with it being not just a a shotgun round, but a slug. Have you ever shot a slug before, Mike? I have. Yeah, dude. Yeah. That's why I was like, uh, like for me, it, it hurt me to watch. Oh yeah, dude. Seriously. I was watching. I was like, oh Oh man, my shoulder would just be broken off. Like I was like, "Geez, man." Um, yeah. Uh, another thing that I thought was cool was some the, some of the dog stuff that they did. I have no idea how they did some of it. Oh, dude, same. But it was really cool. It it blew my freaking mind because uh, I was gonna touch on it. I didn't want to jump ahead too much, but my two favorite fights, and they're tied up there next to the very final one but one of them is the very first one where they're fighting in basically a museum and they keep grabbing knives and throwing the knives and stuff i mean that was just so unique and just over the top both from john wick's perspective and the assassins i mean because they're just it was just one of the it was great how to open it up with that big fight you know i really enjoyed that yeah, that was cool. I mean, there was so many cool fight scenes, like a book. Oh, like, yeah. A library. Dude, come <laughs> on. Like, what the heck? If John, yeah. if John Wick can, he can use anything to kill someone. You could tell now. I mean, he killed a dude with a book. Yeah, he killed a dude with a pencil in, a, in one of the movies. You know, so it's like, guy's lethal, man. But um, the other one that I really enjoyed was the whole scene at... Uh, the uh monaco 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 casablanca whatever they called it in the movie uh, Mor- Mor- morocco morocco 
Yeah, and I think Casablanca is a city in Morocco. Morocco. Well, I don't know. I'm not a world traveler like you, Mike. I don't get vacations. Ah, yes. We just talked about that, so we, we don't have to remind everybody. Matt has used up <laughs> all his vacations for his life. You heard it here. All one of them. It's awful. So, anyways, no. Um, The whole scene with Halle Berry's puppies was incredible. I mean... Those dogs are full on chomping down on these guys, majority in the dong, which was interesting. But hey, whatever, it works. I just, it's all practical, especially even that one, at least it looks practical. Even the one that like climbed up like two or three stories and like got a dude and took him down. Oh, yeah. No, it was, uh, it, it was awesome. Yeah, it all looked 100% practical. Like, that dog really did that. It was not CG, and I don't know how the hell they got a dog to do that. They It must have taken a billion takes. Yeah, yeah, it, it probably did. But it was seriously some of the most impressive dog action stunts work I've ever seen. It was really neat. I really liked that. And I, I bet you anything, they're definitely going to be bringing Halle Berry back in sequels, because... She didn't have a huge role. She didn't have a small role, but clearly it's an integral role because, you know, the marker and everything else. So I think, and they keep going back and talking about that throughout the film about consequences. Everything has consequences. So I bet you she probably will be one of the main characters of either John Wick 4, 5, or 6. Yeah, yeah, uh, I, I I think she will be involved again. Um, they talked a little bit about their history, but there's definitely a little bit of mystery also. So, you know, we, we want to know more. You know, I did. I wanted to know about this Halle Berry's kid thing, this business, and where is she and what is she doing? Anyway, it doesn't Yeah, and that that's um, how she, uh, that's how... You know, she had John Wick had a marker against her is because John Wick helped get her daughter out of the life. Yeah, uh, that was that was cool. Um, the 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 dog stuff. Um, apparently, Matt, this is a little bit of trivia about the movie. Um, Morocco, uh, where they filmed it, uh, w- which is uh, Casablanca, is a city in Morocco. Uh, there's a ton of just stray cats. And they had to round up all the stray cats so it wouldn't distract the dogs for the scenes. So apparently they just had cages and cages full of cats. Ugh. Like they just, they had to, (laughs) yeah. Uh, I don't know, man. I guess it sounded like a nightmare. Like it was probably something that somebody forgot to tell them when they're like, yeah, we want to go to Morocco. And they're like, yeah, that'd be great. It'd be a great place to shoot at. Well, at least the dogs were entertained. But I mean, seriously, those were probably very highly trained a lot of money invested in those dogs and you don't want them running after you know stray cats grabbing stray cats possibly getting a disease or something you know yeah yeah i think um i think those were um belgian malinois or whatever that are often used uh um with special forces and stuff oh the belgian malamutes yeah <laughs> Ma- malinois malamutes <laughs> The cops here always call them the Malamutes. I don't think that's their official... Uh, I don't care. Uh, that's what right. the cops all call right. them. I go with what the police say. All right. All right. <laughs> You're just those like, ones, fine, I'll stop arguing. <laughs> those are the ones that you jump out of the plane, like Special Forces jumps out of the plane with and stuff. And they have little doggy goggles and stuff. <laughs> it's cool. Anyway. Uh-oh. Are um, you going to adopt one, adopt one of those now, Mike? Oh, no. No, no. I don't think I can afford one of those. They're a very, very expensive type of breed. If anyone in this world can afford one, it's you, Mike. No, Matt. I'm on the monthly vacation club, so uh, I I can't because I have a vacation coming. Oh, up. oh. You're not only the a member, you're also the president. <laughs> nice is it was that like a hair club for men? right i was gonna go with vacation club for men nice nice oh man that took me back vacation club for talent there we go better 
Yeah, yeah. I don't need hair club for men. Cause, and, you know, I don't even need a barber because I have a, a Floby um, that, that cuts my hair for me. Is it sucking so. your will to live, too? No, no. No, it's it, it's pretty neat, though. Like, and there's no mess, you know, because it just vacuums the hair as it's cutting. It sucks as it cuts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, man, we are really good at some infomercials. Uh, from like the nineties. All right. Well, Mike, we need to talk about, since we're already off topic, our good friends, the blue milk podcast. Did you watch the clip I sent you of the blue milk podcast talking about us live, Michael? Uh, unfortunately with my vacations and whatnot, I did not get it. What? They don't have the internets in your vacation world? Uh, actually, uh, when we were on the cruise ship and stuff, you could get the internet, but man, was it expensive. (laughs) So I I didn't get it. I think it was $70 for two days. Well, it's all satellite, man. It's probably crazy expensive. Yeah, it was it was crazy expensive, and so I was like, mm, no. Well, anyways, our sister podcast, the Blue Milk Podcast, has started a Patreon, and they were harassing us into giving them money, and I am not going to break down and give them anything. I'm not going to give them a dollar a month, nothing. They're on their own. Yeah, yeah. How can we don't even make any money? How 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 are we supposed to give them any? Right, money? that's what I was trying to argue, but well, whatever. So, for those of you who are trying to support local podcasts, our Blue Milk guys started a Patreon. Uh, they do all kinds of different things for their Patreons or patrons or whatever the hell they call them. I don't know. I haven't even done Patreon ever. Don't really want to. I- I think it's Patreon. Yeah, it's Patreon, but they call the people that give them money patrons. Oh, yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. So, anyways, basically what they're trying to do is get enough money to give themselves a mixing board and possibly a camera in the future and stuff like that to try and help out and bolster the quality of their show. Because, believe it or not, and I don't know why, maybe it's the hours I spend editing this, but they are very jealous of our audio. Our audio? No yeah, way. I know, right? Well, th- it, it, it has to be all your work. Because remember, after all, I'm just the talent. I know. I know. You are just the talent. I was telling them I really got to start making you design a website or something. Because then that'll give you something to do. Yeah. Yeah. That, that would be a lot easier. For I me. tried with the social medias, but you don't know the social medias. And I don't know how you don't know social medias. I don't I don't participate that much in the medias of the social. Well, I don't want to either, but I still have to. It's part of my job. Yeah, that that's that's a difference there. I don't need to do any of that stuff for my job, which is amazing. Well, yeah, cuz you're always on vacation. Yeah, I guess that's true. Where they don't have internet. Not always where they don't have internet, but sometimes. <laughs> All right, Mike. Well, before we get into it, is there anything else you want to add about John Wick 3? Uh, I had a lot of fun with John Wick uh, 3, or John Wick Chapter 3. I don't care. I'm calling it John Wick 3. All right. For for me, it was a lot of fun. Uh, I like this one, I think, better than the second one. I don't know why I didn't like the second one as much. Maybe just I felt like they, I don't know. Maybe I just didn't know where things were going and it just seemed kind of weird with all this extra growing of the the John Wick universe. But this one just flowed right right in from the first one. So I like that. Uh, the unique action stuff was really, really cool. Um, of course, the gunplay stuff's awesome in this movie. It just seems like, I don't know how much more they can keep one-upping themselves because I feel like they keep trying to do stuff harder and harder and just keep doing it. So, I don't know. Uh, I enjoyed this movie a lot. And 
it's it's cool to see Keanu Reeves just killing it, man. <laughs> like these movies are great. Well, all right. Um, I have to say I enjoyed it. It was good. It was an entertaining film. Did it set the world on fire? Eh, I don't know. I, I w- I'd like to see some more wor- world building. I know you're not a huge fan of that. You think there's already enough, but I'd like to see some more. I'm not sure where they're going with uh, it for four. I mean, clearly there there's going to be some kind of conflict between John Wick and the high table and Lawrence Fishburne. And uh, I'm excited that Lawrence Fishburne will probably be a much, much bigger part of sequels from here on out since him and uh keanu reeves are kind of joining forces at least that's how it comes off at the end of the film because that was one that kind of bothered me when they uh cut him up i was like oh great they're getting rid of Lawrence fishburne i mean he barely had a role in the second one and he barely had a role in this one yeah i wasn't sure what was going on with that but that was it was good to see kind of that end thing i was like hmm interesting because i mean you know not to compare it to the matrix it's hard not to but keanu reeves and Lawrence fishburne had fantastic chemistry throughout the entire matrix trilogy it was a different kind of chemistry it was more of a uh teacher student kind of chemistry in matrix in this one it's more of peers like Lawrence fishburne's character sure he's like the king of his little syndicate world underground homeless people thing and then Keanu Reeves is just super assassin. So I'm interested to see what they'll do with it. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So so Matt, with that, do you do you want to give me your rating? Uh your your not five star. No, rating. I think you should go first five because real. this is like one of your favorite movies ever is the John Wick series. So Mr. Talent, how many reels do you give John Wick chapter three? parabellum oh you said the full name this time uh i give this one four and a half reels wow four and a half reels i am i'm surprised you didn't give it five no i i i I liked it a lot but i don't think it was quite five well what makes it five mike a shark yeah, there was less shark in it. Like, if there was just a, like, if, if just John Wick put on a Jaws hat just for a second, that'd be good. Well, what if during the underwater scene, instead of shooting the guy with uh, a gun, he picked up, like, a baby shark? And he, like... Oh, and started singing baby shark, shark, yeah. shark, shark, Yeah, do, 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 yeah. No, I was I was going to go the way that, you know, he picked up a shark with a laser beam on its head and used that to kill the guy. Yeah, you can only get that in certain kinds of movies. And I just don't think John Wick is up to the level that has the sharks with laser beams. Mm. Only Aquaman and Austin Powers has sharks with laser beams on their heads. Yeah, it's true. All right, well, Mike, I enjoyed John Wick Chapter 3 a lot. Uh, As I've said, I want more story. I want more world building. I want to see this underground world. I I would have liked to a little bit more explanation of Angelica Houston's character in her little world with, uh, I'm not sure if they were Russians or whatever, but her little ballerina ballet thing and how sh- oh yeah no yeah there's there's lots of stuff they just like touched on just for a second like little teasers yeah and how she relates to this whole bigger picture i would have liked to have seen a little more explanation there so you know uh there's lots of things that i would like to see answered but overall it was a solid movie the action is definitely the shining star as it always is in john wick films because that's the focus uh i mean you were explaining the story in our last pod about how john wick even came to be and that's yeah yeah that was a unique story so of course the action would be put first so i'm not gonna hate on it for that so anyways i give john wick four out of five reels i definitely think it's well worth a watch especially in the theaters but uh you know i don't know i mean all all the john wicks for me are in the four category 
the four, four and a half. I think I think I probably like the first one better just because the first one, it's the first one. We've never seen anything really like this. Oh, yeah, no, the first one just blew me away. I had no idea what it was about, really, and it, it was so awesome. So, yeah, that's that's probably my four and a half in, out of the series. I did enjoy John Wick Chapter 2 a lot. Um, there's still that unique uh, um, environmental killing, I guess, is a good way to put it. Especially at the beginning <laughs> of John Wick Chapter 2, where he kills people with his car. Ah, yes. I thought that was pretty cool. That and it was a really nice car. And we didn't get to see was. too many cool cars in this one. There's some. We got to see some cool motorcycles and a kick-ass horse. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you're right. There wasn't as much car stuff. I'm hoping they have a lot bigger motorcycle scene. I mean, they had a pretty good motorcycle scene in this one. But uh, Keanu Reeves is a big motorcycle guy. So I'd like to see him get down and dirty and have like a big motorcycle chase thing that goes on for like 10 minutes chapter three did have a pretty good one i mean there was what like 10 motorcycles chasing after him at one point that was pretty cool yeah i think i think the scene was like six or seven minutes though man and like some of the stuff that they were doing i loved how keanu reeves always had his hand on the throttle like, even if he was, like, doing stuff and he would switch hands and he'd still have the other hand on the thro- lo- throttle. Like, I loved all that realism stuff. Well, and the other thing that was cool about the motorcycle scene as well is he wasn't just shooting everybody. He was doing different things to cause the bikes to crash or flip over. Like, I think even at one point he stuck, I think it might have been the dude's arm. <laughs> as messed up as that is in like the wheel of the front wheel of one of the motorcycles and it went end over end that's good thinking yeah 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 he stuck something i don't know what it might have been a gun i don't know what it was it was something something yeah and that was unique because instead of him just sitting there shooting everybody up he's using the again the environment killing so yeah yeah so how many crying babies were in your showing of John Wick Chapter 3? None. Dude. Really? Man. Yeah. You got lucky. No, nothing. Yeah, dude. Nothing. I had three. three. Three? In Prescott, Arizona, of all places. I thought all there is is old people there. Where are these babies coming from? It was the weekend, and I think their grand, their kids and their grandkids were visiting or something. And they just couldn't wait to see John Wick Chapter 3, and they couldn't find a babysitter or something. I don't know. It was pretty freaking ridiculous. Well, if they're going to visit their grandparents, they leave the kid with the grandparents. Right? I don't know. I was just trying to guess. I was trying to figure out how there were... Three separate infants in three different families in John Wick 3 of all movies. Personally, if I was a breeder, I wouldn't want to expose my child to that kind of violence until they were ready for it. Especially not at the age of an infant, but whatever. Yeah, that's definitely not the movie to do it. I don't know, man. (sighs) I'm trying not to tear shit apart too bad about that, but... Because there's an entire podcast coming out either tomorrow or Wednesday or Thursday where I got a special guest appearance on the Mile High Show with Mr. Mile High Show, Matt Santos, and uh, Drinking, a.k.a. Dirk, from the Blue Milk Podcast, where we talked about summer movie blockbusters. It mostly turned into us talking about movie theaters. And... um, dozen other off topics and it's a really long podcast but one of the topics we touch on or actually you know many of the topics we talked about i kept having to refer to our podcast because you and i have talked about the majority of the topics we talked about on that podcast nice nice matt so one of them obviously was the movie going experience and how shittier it's getting And how less people are going to the theaters thanks to streaming services and Netflix and the shitty going experience. It didn't go as in-depth as we have in podcasts past because it was already getting long enough as it was. And But anyways, so if you're interested in hearing me rant more with Dirk and Mr. Santos, that will be out sometime this week. And uh, I think I might grab it and do... 
uh, two episodes for us this week. I don't know. We'll see. Because uh, he, when he okay. publishes it, he said he's going to send it to me, so I might put it out on our feed as one of ours, too. So we'll see. Okay. Cool, man. So, all right, Mike. Well, um, I didn't look at what movies are coming out next week, so I don't know what we're going to talk about. Um, There's something coming out. I know there's some big uh... movies coming out. There's one I want to see, and I don't remember... Yeah, it's Memorial Day weekend next weekend, man. Summer begins. Yeah. yeah, it is. Oh, let's see. Aladdin. I'm. That's what it is. Bright burn. Yep, I really want to see that. That looks really good. Okay, you want to you want to try and pencil in Aladdin, Bright Burn, Book Smart, and uh, the Poison Rose. I don't even know what Book Smart is. I don't know either, man. I was just saying all the movies that came out on Friday. Well, and I um, will be seeing Aladdin. You will But be? not in time for us doing a podcast. Okay. All right. So should we plan to do br- Burn Bright? Bright or? Burn. Oh. Oh, sorry. Bright Burn for the next week podcast. And then... That, that's that's uh, what I'm thinking, man. I mean, it's... You one of your favorite things, and it's one of my favorite things put together. Yeah, it's like a horror, horror, uh, like um, superhero. Yeah. Interesting. Yep, it's a, it's um, basically what there's a comic book written about this kind of as well it, in the DC universe. Um different takes on superman granted that i don't think this is related to dc in any way shape or form but somehow james gunn is getting away with it anyways but it's basically superman but what if superman wasn't kind and wasn't nice and went the other way and so it looks really interesting to me yeah yeah no i i'm 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 interested to to see it as well and um yeah it looks like summer's kicking off matt uh, the next week after that it's it's rocket man uh you know about elton john godzilla king of the monsters um and then the weekend after that it's dark phoenix and yeah and we'll have to see just... definitely probably most of those definitely dark phoenix definitely rocket man because rocket man is getting rave reviews already and then Man, I, I'm I'm a little nervous about this one because this one bothered me when I was a kid. But there's a new remake of Chucky, but it's called Charles. Hmm. Yeah, and isn't someone? Uh, isn't Mark Hamill's doing the voice for Chucky? Yeah, and I think they modernized it so like the doll has AI in it instead of like the demon stuff. But anyway, hmm. interesting. You know, I had one of those dolls that Chucky was based on as a kid, right? No. I oh, yeah. That shit really screwed me up because it was based on what's what was known as my buddy when I was growing up as a kid. And my parents got me one of those. Oh, man. OK, well, save it for the pot. And he was my we'll only friend then. Oh, no. Well, anyways, all right. So, Mike, let's plan for Bright Burn next week. I don't know. I Are you going to see Aladdin? I don't know if I'm going to see it next weekend, but uh, I likely will see it. Well, for work, we're renting out an entire theater, and we're doing a client appreciation event thing, and I am definitely going to go see it on May 28th or 29th. It's one of the two. It's during the middle of the week. It's not on the weekend because of Memorial Day weekend, so... Oh, okay. All right. But I don't know. We'll see. I We could talk about it, I guess, if if you don't have any interest in seeing it, because I honestly have zero interest in seeing it whatsoever. But it's a free movie, and it's for work, so I'm on it. All right, man. But we'll figure it out. Uh, but yeah. definitely bright burn for next week. I really am looking forward to that movie. That one, that one will be cool. So, all, all right, right, dude. Do your thing. Get us out of here. Have a cool little outro, something, something. I don't know. Well, uh, you know, thanks everybody for listening again. And, uh, 
you know, uh, John Wick Chapter 3 Parabellum was a pretty good movie. And if you get a chance to go see it in the theaters, you should. Thank you for listening to The Real Film Nerds. Now, don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Real Film Nerds. Now, go out and catch a movie.